Well, hello everyone. I hope you're having a blessed and beautiful day today. So today is question and answer day, and I had fully planned on doing a video where you can see me talking and stuff, but um, things have changed. <laughs> so I'm going to put a picture up so you can kind of imagine me talking. Um, so I'm going to be answering a few questions today, and I thought this all the questions that came in were amazing and thank you for taking the time to do so thank you for sending in your questions um, if I don't answer your question here I will do it in the comment section um, if I haven't already done so so the first question is when your heart is heavy with loneliness and the enemy whispers how unworthy he thinks you are do you remember whose you are that you are loved and have not only the Holy Spirit in you, but guardian angels beside you. Do you take a quick glance back at your life and notice how far you've walked with Jesus and reflect on the pitfalls you escaped or didn't that he got you out of? Do you ever, in a moment of silence, feel our Father's love smiling down on you before life distracts you again? So... When I have loneliness, because just because we are Christians doesn't mean that we escape that feeling. Everybody feels lonely from time to time. And when it slips in, sometimes it's hard to remember whose I am. It it's, seems like when the enemy attacks with loneliness in my life, he isn't messing around. And he will do what he can to take not only my eyes off of Jesus and my focus off of the Lord, but he will also tempt me to put them onto my circumstances and my feelings. Um, it's not until I begin to feel the Lord drawing close to me that I can clearly recognize the, um, the attack of the enemy and I can run to the Father for forgiveness at that point. Um, loneliness, it's never easy when we feel lonely because at times we even feel like the Lord is distant and it can make us um, fall deep into that sadness and loneliness even with just that. Um, so yes, I do take a glance back at my life and see how far I've come and how close I've gotten with the Lord and even um, how much I've learned through the years. I can see where I used to be, where I once was, and then I see where I am now and how much growth I I have. And I also see the love that I had for the Lord, and sometimes I almost get jealous with myself, um, wishing that I could be like that again. But then I realize that I not only am, like that, but I've also changed so much since then, and I've changed for the better. And the stumbling blocks that at times I have allowed in my life and others in my life, it was due to uh, the stumbling blocks, it was due to other people. Um, they've caused me to grow in my relationship with Jesus, and it also helped me to learn along the way. And God will always use everything for his glory. So the things done in the past, whether we did them in good or bad, they can and will be used for his glory. And if you allow him to use it in your life, you may be able to help somebody else in, the, in their life because of something that you've been through. Um, because you've been through it and you have experience in it and you can help anybody along along that path. Um. And then you asked if I ever feel the Father's love smiling down on me. And the answer to that is, oh, yes. <laughs> I have had moments where I honestly feel like he is standing there hugging me. I can feel like a warm embrace and feel I can feel like all the hairs on my skin all over my body is standing straight up. And I love it when I feel that because I feel like he is so close at that moment and sometimes I will even wish that I could see like into the spiritual realm so that I could see him standing there, you know, embracing me at that moment. So the next question is from Tamara Magdalene. She asked, do you just cry sometimes thinking about Jesus? Oh, yes. 
especially if I get to talking about heaven, that is one thing that I will immediately start crying about. And I will start crying about how amazing Jesus is. And when I talk about what he has done for me and the love that he has for me, uh, it's amazing. And people think I'm crazy because I cry all the time over every little thing. Um, so the next question is from Kiwi Fantasy. How do you know when the Lord is telling you the answer? And from here on out, I've written down my answers so that I could get, uh, say it correctly. Um, so to your answer, sometimes it's hard to figure out if the Lord's telling you or your own mind is telling you. There are many ways that we can figure out if the Lord is indeed telling us the answers and he speaks in many ways if we are willing to have an open heart and an open mind. One way obviously is to continue to pray about that situation. If it's his will, you will begin to see the doors open and the situation will flow like water, meaning that it will be just easy easy, and whatever you prayed about just seems like it's it's happening very easily without really you doing anything about it. If there are stumbling blocks in the way and it feels like nothing you do is right or you feel like anytime you try to do whatever it is that it fails, it may be that God is showing you his answer, his no. And he also speaks through Christian music, and I've noticed this myself. I've had many times that I've been praying about something, and then I'll go get in the car and turn the radio on, and the song has words that answers exactly the prayer that I had just been praying about. And he also answers through other people. He will lay something on their heart that they can't understand, and oftentimes they will come to you and say, I don't know why, but the Lord led me to say this or that to you, or he put this on my heart for you. He will also speak through his word. This is where patience and an open heart comes in. This is where we, he will show you the way, but you have to be willing to receive it. All right. The next question is from Many on Mission. I love this lady. Oh, I love you so much. This is going to be a long answer. So um, you had a great question and... I took a lot of time writing this out because it was such a great question. Um, when you are not on YouTube, do you have yourself any kind of hobbies? Creati creative, cooking, painting, collecting rocks. And what are your top five favorite foods? I would like to know more about your life. Um, anything that you're willing to share publicly. I know you have kids. What are their ages, boys and girls? This one, this answer is going to be fun. So... Um, I love crafting. I love crafting. I love sewing. I love painting, wreath making, um, mason jar crafts, crocheting. I love all of it. I sew um, little dresses or skirts for my daughter, um, as well as tote bags. And um, even I've gotten into like the pocket tissue holders. Uh, I sew like a little pocket for those. Um, let's see here. And painting, I love painting, even though I'm not good at it, I do love it, and it helps sometimes because it will relax me, and it just helps me to be creative in that situation, and the mason jar crafts is a different one, but I've grown to love it so much. I'll usually chalk the outside, and we'll make like a topiary that goes inside, or I'll use it as a utensil holder on the counter or um, use it for a vase, or I've also used it to put little twinkle lights in and some flowers um, with that. And crocheting, I love to crochet, and I do lots and lots and lots of stuff with that, but I have never made a blanket. <laughs> I've never even uh, attempted to, and I think it's because it takes too long, and I like to be able to do things that have a pretty speedy um, result. So I do make like hats and headbands and ear ear uh, warmers and um, like stuff for your book, like the paper clip um, bookmarks. I'll make I'll like crochet something for the top of the paper clips. I'll do that. Um, let's see, what are my top five favorite foods? I love 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 Italian food of all kinds. And while I was pregnant for the three kids. That's all I 
8. I just loved it so much. That's probably why they love it now too. Uh, my second choice would be Mexican food. I, I could eat Mexican food every single day if I could. I love it so much. And I make a Mexican macaroni salad that is so, so good. I'm usually the only one that eats it because um, I make a, a ton of it. And I will usually eat it for lunch <laughs> every day because I love it so much. Um, my third choice would be like comfort foods like macaroni and cheese. Um, I make like a chicken and rice casserole. And yes, I'm one of those people that I love casseroles. And it's kind of funny to say, but I just, I can't help it. I love casseroles. Um, those are really, I don't really have top five. That's really just my top three. Um, I love all of that. I love it. Um, let's see. And then more about my life. Um, this is the part that's going to be the longest <laughs> because I'm really going to tell you about my life. Um, so my dad was in the military and we moved for what seemed like often, but I don't think it was really that much. I, I think it was just because I was a kid that it seemed like that much. But I was born in Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. From there, we moved to uh, Knob Noster, Missouri, and where my dad was stationed at the base there for a few years until I was about three or four. And then he was stationed to at Vandenberg Air Force Base in Lompoc, California, where we stayed for a few years. Um, and then my dad was then stationed to March Air Force Base in Marina Valley, California, which is in Southern California. It's right outside of Riverside, um, and that's where we stayed until I moved out of the state at the age of 23. And while living there, that is where I attended dental school with the intentions <laughs> that since I was in dental in the dental field, that I would get braces done for free. And not one dentist that I worked for even offered to do that. So whatever. <laughs> but God made me the way I am and he loves me the way I am, crooked teeth and all. So <laughs> um, I graduated dental school and I became a dental assistant and was hoping to work my way up to be becoming a hygienist. But God shut the doors for that position and um, also... Uh, and, and it was okay that he did that. Um, and so I worked in the dental field for five years. And I even moved up here um, to Washington and got a job as a dental assistant. And the last dentist I worked for uh, pretty much made me never want to work in the dental field again. He was horrible. Um, he was not very nice to me or to anybody, any of his staff, and that really turned me off. And at that point, I never worked in the dental field again, um, which is fine. You know, the Lord, I felt that he was closing the doors at that point, and it was something that I did in my life. I went to school, graduated, and, you know, started that, and it was on to something else. So um, from that point on, I hopped around from different jobs um, I worked at the Harley Davidson shop, which I'm telling you right now, it's a pathway to Satan. I, that, that store is demonic in every sense of the word. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail other than that, but, um, you definitely meet a lot of people that are demonic and I'll just say that. So I quit that job. I ended up getting married during that period of time, and I ended up becoming a nanny to a little boy with Down syndrome for a few years, and I did that until I got pregnant with our oldest son, Maverick, who is now 10, and at that point, I became a stay-at-home mom, and that's what I've been doing since he was born, and I wouldn't change it. I love it. You know, of course, there's good and bad days, but um, I would not change it for the world, um, I knew from a young girl that the Lord wanted me to be a stay-at-home mom, so I'm glad that he blessed me and put a man in my life that um, agreed and thought the same thing and wanted and desired the same thing because that was where the Lord was leading me. So I became a stay-at-home mom, and from that point, we've had two other kids, Matthias, who's eight, and Corinne, who's six. And we decided after um, a few years that we were going to homeschool. 
Um, I let, we allowed the boys to go to a Christian school for a few years, and after learning some of the things that the church was teaching the boys, that was it for us, and we pulled them out and haven't looked back. We've been homeschooling forever since, and that's been about four years now. Um, and of course, you know, some days are incredibly challenging <laughs> being not only a stay-at-home mom, but also a homeschooling mom to a husband in the military who's gone sometimes, um, you know, it all lands on me. So sometimes it can get really um, frustrating and and just, but the good part about homeschooling is that you can take a break and you can take a day off and you can go on field trips. You can go and get out of the house and go do things. So that's the good part of, of that. Um, anyway, so that was long, but that's briefly about my history, my story. Um, and there is a a portion in there that I am going to make a separate video about, and it, it is going to be um, sharing about the uh, the addiction um, that I had, and I definitely want to share that. The Lord has led me to share that, and hope I pray that it you know helps to bring others to Christ and will help set others free um, from the bondage that they might be facing um, with the same addiction that I had. So that that's coming up here in a few days. Um. And then Shelly Hall asks, my question is, have you ever heard God's voice? And she was asking if it sounded like a man. Have you ever heard God's voice like this? And if so, did he sound male? And the answer is yes. I've heard him audibly um, twice in my life, and each time they sounded exactly the same. It was a male voice, um, a very gentle voice, but it was definitely a male. God is not a female and he would never speak in a female voice to confuse his people. He will come with authority even um, and, and will be known. Any story I have heard about people who have heard him audibly, they always say that his voice is that of a man. And I've also heard them say that it sounds like rushing water. Um, I didn't hear that sound as far as rushing water, but I did hear him audibly in my ear speaking to me. The first time was during the time that I had backslidden and I was married to my ex-husband at the time. And I was sitting on the stairs of our house and I heard a man's voice audibly in my ear saying my name. Um, and it wasn't a scary voice. It wasn't a demonic voice. It was a very gentle but soft and uh, it prompted me to, it got me attention. And I think that's what he was trying to do to let me know not only was he still there, but it was also to get my attention. Um and then the second time um, I had moved a few years later after that, I had moved back home with my parents. I was sitting on the floor in my bedroom reading the Bible and I was praying and suddenly I heard the man's voice again in my ear. And this time he said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And like I said, each time they both sounded identical. It was a man's voice clearly. It was, it was clearly not my voice <laughs> because, you know, I could clearly, there was a man, you know, talking to me in my ear. Um, so, yes, I, God is not a female and God is not going to have a female voice. Um, he's going to come with authority and he's going to speak as he speaks. He's not going to change his voice to confuse people to think that he's a woman or anything like that. He's, he's going to come. He is who he is when he says, I am that I am. He is who he is. So, uh, Steve, I'm sorry if I don't say your last name right. Steve Sedeno. I hope I said that right. I don't know. I apologize if I didn't. Um, okay, your question. I have, in heaven, I wonder if we would recognize people we've ever met we've never met, I'm sorry, such as great-great-grandparents or a person from the Bible who lived centuries ago. This was a fun question too. I love this. Um, I'm absolutely sure we will recognize them and I know that we will know them by name. Um, uh, our knowledge is going to increase in heaven and we are going to be like Christ. Um, so we are going to know these people even without saying a word. We're going to be able to recognize their face even though we've never met them. And we will also have an understanding of who they are and who they are to us. Um, we will also know one another's names of the people that we've never ever seen um, or heard of before. We will also recognize one another and others will know us. 
And if at all through our lives we have planted a seed any to anybody that has taken root, um, I fully believe that they are going to recognize us. And even if we didn't realize it at the time, if we had been praying for them, if we planted a seed um, that the Holy Spirit watered and they became a Christian because of the seed that we had planted, I believe that they are going to come up to us and, you know, they're going to introduce themselves. We're going to know who they are. And it's exciting and it's exciting to think about and I can't wait to see everybody, all of my brothers and sisters from the beginning of time to the end of time and we're going to know them all and we're going to be all friends and we're going to all know each other and I just can't wait for that day. All right, so this is the last question. It's by Sarah Sophia. What do your thoughts? What are your thoughts about being friends with unbelievers, like hanging out with them and things like that? So when a person becomes a Christian, it should be hard for that person to be around those types of friends, those types of people that are lost and in the world. When we get the Holy Spirit, we are changed and we are a new person in Christ. And by allowing ourselves to remain friends and hang around those types of people, who still live in darkness, is not advised by God. And it says in Proverbs 1.15, My son, do not walk in the way of them. Hold back your foot from their path, for their feet run to evil. And then in 2 Corinthians 6.14, it says, Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers, for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light and darkness? This means that believers, as believers, we should not walk in the same paths as those who are still in the world and, and those in the world that still walk in uh, wickedness. If we choose to do so, it will lead us down a path of sin and it will fill our minds with things that are not pleasing to God. This is when we compromise. This is when our walk ends up uh, tainted and this is when we will end up doing things that are not good and not right. We can certainly be cordial with those people. Of course, we show them love. We, we don't treat them any differently as far as loving them and showing the love of Christ with them. Um, and we should even pray for them and lead them to Christ. Um, but that should be about it. There should be no, no more associating, no more hanging out, no more partying with these types of people. Um, even if you've been friends with them for a very long time, I know it's hard to do, but when you become a Christian, you should leave that stuff in the past and you should move on with your new life. Absolutely, like I said, be nice to them, be cordial, um, just start pulling yourself away and move towards the things of the light instead of things of the darkness. Um, after you become a new creation, all of the things have become new and your mind and your spirit are also new. Don't contaminate it just to be like uh, to be liked by the world. You need to keep yourself pure and focus only on things from above. So I hope that helped. And thank you to everybody who sent in questions. I love each and every one of you. And they were so fun to answer. And I hope that answered some of them. Um, If I didn't mention your name, I will answer your questions in the comments section. And I love you guys. And we should do this again um, here next time. And hopefully we'll get some even some more questions. Um, So with that, I love you guys. And until next time, may you be richly blessed.